All right, everybody. Well, first of all, we want to thank you all for really jumping on here with us. Um, and this is something new that we're going to start doing. Those of you who know us know that we had a podcast a couple of years ago, actually. We started a podcast and, <clears throat> and was doing it really, really good. And then kind of life happened. And you know how that is. Things happen. <laughs> and so the podcast kind of got put on the back burner. And so we wanted to bring the podcast back. But we also, after celebrating 10 years of marriage this past Thursday, thought it w- would be really cool, be really fun to jump on here and talk about marriage and some of the things that we've learned, some of the things that, you know, after 10 years, I tell people after 10 years, you start knowing some stuff for real. You know, a lot of, <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of times, a lot of times people say they know something and they've been married maybe one year, two years. Sure. You don't know nothing after one or two years. It, it takes you, it takes you a minute to really know what you know and know what you don't know. And so after 10 years of marriage, two children and at one point, two mortgages, they, they like, <laughs> they like, they like kids. That's when you know you love each other, <laughs> two mortgages. And, uh, you know, we, we've seen some things, we've, we've been through some things and, uh, we've learned, we've learned mm-hmm. so much about what God's grace is all about and, uh, what marriage is all about and what makes it work. And honestly, nowadays, there's so much going on in this world, so much going on in the area of relationships, and people are struggling in so many different ways. Uh, We just thought we'd add our voice to it. If by chance we could uh, help somebody uh, along the way in their relationship as well. Amen. And we do want to make sure that we say thank you to everybody who wished us a happy anniversary. Oh, yeah. But anyway, we're back. We're ready to go. And uh, we're glad you're here. And uh, as my wife was saying just before we we had the interruption, uh, that uh, we're thankful uh, that for everybody who who wished us happy anniversary and and spoke to us and dropped a line or a note on there. So thank you guys for that, very much so. And uh, we thought it would be really cool to come on here and talk to you guys about five things from each of us. You know, she has five, and and myself has five about things that we really know we've learned over the last ten years about marriage, and. Um, to really just kind of hone it in on just a few things, because a lot of times when we start talking about marriage, you can you can talk about more than what people can really digest. And so uh, these are things that we feel like we know, you know, not things that we've uh, heard somebody else say or or read in a book somewhere, but really that we have put to work in our own lives and we've come away and we've kind of gleaned after 10 years that this is absolutely so. And uh It'll work for just about anybody. So do you want to go first? I'll let you go first if you want to, or we can just kind of. All five, or you just want to go back and forth? Oh, we can go back and forth. Okay. That way it'll make it easy. Okay. Um, yeah. my, my first my first nugget from, from 10 years of marriage is basically that marriage is not 50-50. And I'm sure many of you guys who are married, y'all, y'all know that you mm-hmm. realize that because not everybody has 50 to give. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> all you get, truth. sometimes all you have is is 45, and uh, and that's gonna have to work. Ten so. <laughs> or ten, um, but oh, but marriage, ten. but marriage is about two people becoming one, and so uh, you make up for that difference, and you and you carry the burden of your spouse, mm-hmm. um, as long as the Holy Spirit would would support you in doing so. Um, and believing that he will, he will train and teach and get you to the point that you need to be. So that's my first one. Yeah, it's definitely not 50, 50, definitely not. And, uh, and if you're looking for that, you're going to get frustrated Very because, so. and then you're going to be, when you're starting to look for 50, 50, you tend to start keeping score. Absolutely. And that's what really starts to mess up a marriage is when people start keeping score about everything Absolutely. because they're trying to divvy everything up evenly. Mm-hmm. And that, that's just not possible. That's just, that's not the real world. That's not how human beings live. And one of the things that uh, I like to talk about now, I being a pastor, being a minister uh, and having done that now for a number of years, I've had the opportunity to sit down and counsel with people and talk to people and then being married for 10 years, I've come away recognizing one of the biggest things that a lot of times a lot of people don't realize and that I, I, I knew it, but I didn't know it like I know it now, is that love cost. And that's the first thing that, that I've learned, that love is not free. I don't know. They say it in the movies. They tell you. <laughs> they tell you all, no, Jennifer they, Lopez said her love don't cost a thing. Yeah, they, they <laughs> <laughs> That's not you getting crazy, but but seriously though, they they say all of this stuff to us over and over and over, <laughs> but it's not true. The cross of Jesus Christ is the ultimate symbol of love. Everybody knows that. No nobody is going to disagree with that. Why? Because he laid down his life. 
But the cross is a symbol of love. And if we believe that, then we have to realize that the cost is a sim- that the cross is a symbol of cost. Absolutely. Now, it didn't cost you anything, but it cost him his life. You mm-hmm. see, and so love always costs you. And what I found is that a lot of people want love, but they don't have the human capital, so to speak, to actually obtain and maintain it. And this is where we get into a lot of trouble. And uh, so, so what I mean when I say human capital, I'm talking about not money, even though money is important to every marriage and every relationship, uh, but not money. I'm talking about values. I'm talking about character. I'm talking about loyalty. I'm talking about life skills, the ability to be able to deal with conflict, Absolutely. not be and deal with you and being secure and not insecure. Mm-hmm. This is all human capital. This is the stuff that's internal in all of us that we have to cultivate because that's what's going to cost you in a relationship. And that's the work we ought to be doing in our singleness. You know Absolutely. What I mean? It's not the work that you bring to the table once you get married. That's the wrong time. No, it's like trying to build a house in the storm. Absolutely. You, you can't build it then. And so a lot of times in singleness, what we do is we spend all our time being a single person looking for somebody mm-hmm. <laughs> instead of spending our time in our singleness, developing human capital, working some things out, working some <laughs> things out so that when you get that person, man, the love that it's, it's going to cost you, but you have the wherewithal to pay for it, to obtain it and to maintain it. And it's just like anything else. If you don't have enough money to, to purchase and maintain a home, if you don't have enough money to purchase and maintain a car, what's going to happen? It's going to get repossessed. That car is going to get repoed or that house is going to be foreclosed on. Mm-hmm. Why? Because you didn't have the capital to maintain it. And the same thing is true of marriage. The same thing is true of love. If you're not, if you're not building your human capital, that's your character, your values. If you're not learning how to deal with some things, get rid of some stuff in your life. If you're not dealing with in those areas of your life, that marriage will be foreclosed on. And if you look around you, that's it's what you're seeing. You're seeing a whole lot of foreclosures because people don't have the capital necessary to maintain that marriage. Absolutely. And so all of that happens. And, and, you know, in all honesty, sometimes it's because people come from broken homes and broken situations. And so they never get, they came out at a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. And so they never had enough. But that's where you spend your singleness doing what you got to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you didn't get it at home, go read a book, go find a mentor, go sit down and talk to somebody and say, look, tell me. Absolutely. What I need to know, because I'm telling you, you need that capital to spend when you get in a marriage. And that's the thing that I know that I know that I know I've learned. <laughs> I guess I had you spending. So, yes. Uh, <laughs> so my, my second thing was for, for us as, as married people to accept God's design. And, mm. and that means the covenant partnership that's uh, in everything that, that deals with your marriage, whether that's agreement whether that's money. Um, but I think sometimes people kind of, they want to still keep some of their individuality and they want to keep some of their self mm. um, outside of their marriage. And so that's it true. conflicts, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to have the same bank accounts because it's like, I don't trust him to do right. And I don't, yes. I want my own thing. Yeah. Uh, but when we do that, we, uh, we undermine the entire, the entire reason for marriage, which was for those two people to come together and be one. Exactly. So I think we have to accept what God's design for marriage was, and we have to work within those constraints and in, within those boundaries. Um, now there's freedom in those boundaries, so I don't say constraints mm-hmm. like all of a sudden, yeah. you know, you're locked up and, and tied up, but, um, but God's freedom is in following his law, his way of doing yes. and being and his way of living. Yes. And so if we fail to do that, we end up, basically you know finding an escape hatch because that's what we do when we don't come into true partnership and covenant with people we're always kind of hedging our bets that if something goes wrong i got my bank account i got my house over here i've got my secret stash um and i don't i don't think that's the way that you can build a marriage i I don't know how you could i don't know how you could possibly give 100 percent to something that you're you're hedging your bets is going to fail. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you if you're working on your exit strategy, how are you going to ever give 100% to being in something? And that's where that's very dangerous and that's where people don't recognize, you know, I know I know couples have talked to couples talk about the separate bank accounts and I I, I keep mine here and he keeps his <laughs> over there and and they're doing all this stuff, but of course you end up counseling those same people. <laughs> and the reason you end up counseling them is because they're living in two different directions. Mm-hmm. You cannot be living as though something's going to fail and be working 100% as though it's going to last forever at the same time. 
that you can't do it. And that, oftentimes, that's double mindedness. I'm sorry to cut you off. But, no, that's fine. But but in oft, oftentimes, I think we we take any type of rubbing or any type of discomfort with marriage as that signal to say you better keep your singleness just a little while longer mm -hmm. instead of accepting the fact that when two people come together, there's gonna be that. Oh, yeah. I don't like when you do that. <laughs> you know? And I just realized that. Yeah, exactly. Because you haven't lived with that person. Exactly. Uh, ideally, you haven't lived with that person and you haven't seen that person mm -hmm. uh, in the in the light of day. So once you get married, you get introduced to some things oh, that yeah. you're like, I don't like the way you wake up in the morning because <laughs> that was the thing with us. Like, <laughs> oh, I, man, I, can't I am you. not. I repeat, I <laughs> am not never have been am becoming better at being a you morning are. person, yeah. becoming much better at it. But I am not a morning person. So when I got up, man, the first I know in the first few years of our marriage, I wake up in the morning and you couldn't get much out of me out of me. But a grunt. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was just like, mm hmm. Hey. Which was okay. That's what she was go get. Which was okay when it was just he and I. But when you have little kids, you know, yes. children make you engage. I know if you have kids, it's engaged. When you're up, they don't care how you slept. Engage immediately. <laughs> I mean, they. I mean, you're up. Let's go 100 miles an hour, nonstop. And so I had to learn how to adjust. I had to learn how to make those adjustments. And a lot of people. They take, like you said, the slightest thing, and the next thing you know, it's like an indication to them that this thing can work. Camelot isn't perfect. <laughs> that's right. And oh my God, what's going on? And next thing you know, they they completely ruin something that's just naturally taking a process Absolutely. of maturity and change. That's just all it is to it. Mm -hmm. Which kind of brings me to my my second thing that I've learned, uh, very true, that when we get married, we marry a mirror. And let me explain that. Uh, one of the weaknesses we have as human beings, all of us, is that we cannot see ourselves. I don't care how wonderful you are and how great you think you are, you do not totally and completely see yourself. It's the reason why in the natural speaking, we all have mirrors in our home because when you get up in the morning, you do not know what you look like <laughs> <laughs> until you go and look in the mirror and the mirror tells you what you look like. The same is true in marriage, we marry mirrors. Our spouses show us things about ourselves that we've never seen. And mm -hmm. it's just the truth. Attitudes that we never knew we had, ways of dealing with conflict that we never knew we had, ways of managing money. You know, when you're managing money all by yourself for yourself as a single person, you are completely blind to what you are blind about financially. Mm -hmm. But when you marry somebody else, their perspective is invited into your life. And all of a sudden you start to see, oh man, I, I do see money that way. I do handle money this way. And you may have thought all oh, this time in your life that you would, you know, you was all right mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> until you, until you get in the home with somebody and they bring a different perspective and it's like a mirror. They put it up to your life and you have to look at yourself. Mm -hmm. And what makes a lot of people struggle in marriage is they don't like what they look like when they see themselves for the first time <laughs> being married to somebody. But that's and, especially and that's the truth. Mm -hmm. That's especially when when we're supposed to be completely naked and open mm -hmm. to that person. You know what I mean? It's yes. easy for people to think that they see you when they really don't see you. They mm. just see kind of the front or the facade that you put on. So I think that's kind of what happens in marriage. It's like, yeah. oh my gosh, I am naked and I am so ashamed <laughs> of <laughs> exactly. what's going on. But isn't that, isn't that what God intended? Oh, absolutely. That was God's yeah. original design was to be naked and unashamed with someone. Absolutely. And so the institution is always going to be working on uncovering you. Hear me. Hear me, you child of God. The mm. institution of marriage, it came from God's mind. It is not our institution. It's not the way we want to do it. It's his. And it's always going to be working at uncovering you, undressing you spiritually and emotionally. And this is why people have such a hard time with it yeah. because they don't like getting undressed in front of nobody. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the truth of the matter is, we spend our lives going through so many different things. We've put on so many fig leaves, so Absolutely. many layers, so many things emotionally and in our personalities. We, ha we are covered up. We, it's, it's 95 degrees outside. <laughs> But spiritually and emotionally, we got on <laughs> overcoats <laughs> and hoodies. Oh. I mean, we've covered ourselves up with so much to deal with so much pain that mm -hmm. when we get into the institution of marriage, it is designed to start peeling that stuff off of you. And if you're not comfortable with that, you're going to resist it and you're going to become defensive sometimes to your spouse. You're Absolutely. going to take it out on them when it's really not them. 
it's God's institution. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. And so, man, I'm telling you, I've, I've learned anything. I've learned that I merit a mirror. This woman shows me who I am <laughs> and I've grown to love it. And vice I've, versa. And I've grown to embrace it because she has acted as an extension of the Holy Spirit in my life to show me the things that I need to deal with. Which is exactly what happens when yeah. people when people are submitted to Christ first. Mm. And that's, and that again is part of why people have issues because they come into marriage and they're not sub- submitted to Christ. They've got their own yeah. pre- preconceived notions of what marriage looks like yeah. and how it should fit them. Um, and so unless we, unless we put Jesus first and give the Holy Spirit room to speak, um, we, we won't feel that way, right? We won't feel like, wow, you're just the instrument of the Holy Ghost. You're just trying yeah. to tell me something about <laughs> no, myself. No. That's not how you feel. No, you're an enemy. Absolutely. <laughs> you're Absolutely. getting on my nerves. You're getting on my nerves. <laughs> you, yeah, exactly. exactly and happened. you feel like that person is not understanding you. I, exactly. I, I, my God, I hear this and get this so much when talking to married people. Well, I, he just doesn't understand me or she just doesn't understand me. And sometimes it's not that they are misunderstanding you. It's that you are seeing things about yourself that you don't like to look at. Absolutely. And, and they understand you them. clearly, that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> which, is why, which is the scary part. Exactly. That's the scary exactly. part. But yeah, that's, okay. you got yours, your my, third one? My third one. Yeah. Uh, my third one is it's, it's not always what you say, but it's how you say it. Mm. And I think so, so often, Man. you know, we're always terse and and we always feel more at home with the people that we say we love right i can i can be a little short with you because you know how i feel today yeah. right or i <laughs> yeah. can i can kind of give you that's that side true. eye because you know that's i'm true. tired um and i, I think sometimes we just yeah. we take for granted the fact that truly our ministry first is at home and if we if we treat those people you know kind of like whatever it doesn't matter mm-hmm. um you, you basically you basically kind of give that same vibe to the Lord, right? You're kind of telling him it doesn't matter because he gave you your spouse. He gave you your children. So I think so often it's important that we say, yeah, man. I've got to measure. I've got to measure my words and I've got to measure how it sounds when I said it. Because you know all those things, right? You know those ticks mm-hmm. that your spouse has. So I know when there's a ba- it's a bad time for me to bring something to Iron, <laughs> right? I know when, when he's not really going to be open to this yeah. information, right? So, yeah. But if I, if I pick my spots wisely... Right. I, can, I mean, I can I can win more more bees with, with more flies with honey or whatever the, yeah. the saying says. So. Yeah. But I mean, that's that that's that whole aspect of negotiation in marriage that a lot of times people if you've got a heavy hand and you want things your way, mm-hmm. you, you you're not going to make it in marriage. Let me just tell you, if you do, you're going to eventually end up in a marriage where two people have decided to mutually coexist, but there won't be any there there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Because because marriage is not about getting your way. And the more you want to try to demand and get your way, the worse off your home is going to become because it's all about negotiation. Yeah, It's all about learning when to talk to my wife, how to speak to my wife. And if you want to, well, I just tell it like it is. I just I just shoot it straight. And, I, you know, that's the way I've always been. Well, you need to find a new way to be. You need mm-hmm. to find a new way to be because I'm telling you that's not conducive for longevity in love because mm-hmm. love, remember, love costs. That's right. So something ought to be costing you. And if you keep going throughout your marriage and nothing is ever costing you, but it's costing the other person. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Your, your marriage is out of balance and there are going to be real issues in that home. And so you have to negotiate, man. You have to learn. That. And I've learned it. I've learned how to oh. wake up in the morning. I've yes, learned. Yeah. <laughs> He's learned much to, better because we used to have to do it some, all, man. Oh, go goodness. back to bed. OK, <laughs> I just reverse. Go right on back and, and work it's the on truth. it. It's the truth. It's all the truth and nothing but the truth. But I was going to say, you know, specifically for us, I've, I've learned that more with children because, of course, adults, you know, we can figure it out. But yeah. I've, lear- I've learned that more I'm more aware of it. And it's, and it's more of a of a conscious effort for me with mm. my children that yeah. I don't want to I, I never want to talk to them like they bother me. Mm. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? I never want to talk to them like, oh, why are you here? Because <laughs> yeah. I'm the one who decided. Right. We got together. We did this. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, exactly, I always man. try to be very careful about that. And, and you know, one of the one people. of the things about not to cut you off, no, but, you know, one of the things about our children if you think you married a mirror, you wait till your babies come along. Oh, absolutely. They will be an ex- they will be an HD 4K mirror <laughs> for for what you are really like. And and that was a statement I came across that is so powerful when it comes to children and it's so true. It said be very careful how you speak to your children 
because it will become the inner voice in their head. Absolutely. And that is the God on his truth. If you're always raising your voice, you're tough, you're short, you're mm-hmm. cutting, you're biting, you're always on them about every little cotton picking thing there is. They're going to develop an inner voice that's very critical, judgmental, and they're going to be unsure of themselves. Exactly. And, uh, and, and it's not just that. There'll be a whole lot of other things. And so we, we have to make sure that we speak to them properly. We have to make sure that we speak to our spouses properly because if not, man, your, your mouth will ruin your home. It just mm-hmm. will. It just will. All right. Well, let me get to my number three thing. We're about to finish this up. The number three thing that is vitally important for your marriage, uh, and this kind of is from my heart to a lot of the guys out there as well, specifically, uh, you got to find your purpose. You have to find God's divine assignment for your life. I want to show you, I want to share something with you from the scripture that here this week recently I was, I was studying. Uh, in the scripture it says that God made Adam a help meet. Now notice he didn't make him a playmate. He didn't make <laughs> him a friend. He didn't make him some type of, uh, uh, you know, pleasure, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. He didn't do that. He made him a help meet. Help meaning that work was involved. And so your work, your God ordained assignment, your work is very intrinsic to your union. Mm-hmm. One of the things that throws so many marriages off kilter is that either one or both of the people in that marriage have not found their God ordained work. Mm -hmm. They haven't found it. They don't know. They don't kind of know what they're to do. And if as a man, if you don't find your work, you have a tendency to start to make your wife your work. I'm going to say that again. If as a man, and this is where I'm speaking just specifically to to the gentleman, if you don't find your work, that means your God assignment, the anointing on your life, the purpose of God for your life, you will, you will begin to make your wife your work and that mm-hmm. you'll begin to try to get her to become uh, this, this masterpiece of yours. Well, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be on her about her look. You'll be on her about her talk, her, repre- her, re- her presentation, the way she represents you. you I've, I've seen men literally break their wives down. Mm-hmm. I mean, just, I mean, from head to toe because simply put, the man hasn't found his work. He hasn't found the thing that is to fulfill him. And so when he doesn't know his work, when he doesn't know his work, he doesn't know his woman's value Mm -hmm. because she's sent to help him with his work and vice versa. He'll help her with hers. And so when the work is not identified, value is unknown. And you tend to you tend to uh, you tend to then abuse and you're going to misuse you're not going to put the person in the proper place in your life. And see, these are the things that are so dangerous that happen in marriage all the time. So one of the things that I've discovered that just literally cleans marriage up of so much stuff is discovering your purpose. And specifically for us as men mm-hmm. to find God's design and God's work for your life. Now, get a job. <laughs> <laughs> but believe God for your work. And when yeah. I'm talking about work, I'm talking about your purpose. But but also work. Do do the things that you know you're supposed to do that are your obligations as a father and as a husband. But be believing God for your work, for your calling, for what God has put in, uh, called you to do in your life. Because I'm telling you, that gives clarity to her as to the role she plays, what she's to do. Because I'm telling you, she's equipped to help you. She's equipped to multiply you. She's, mm-hmm. she's equipped to take you higher and higher. But when you don't know your work, she's kind of left to find her own work. But it also and gives, she will. It gives the woman <laughs> security, right? Because if, mm-hmm. if a woman doesn't feel secure, there's going to be a lot of issues in that house. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think when a man finds his purpose... And that woman says, okay, yeah, he's, he's got it. Yeah. He knows exactly what direction he's headed. I can now trust him, right? Yeah. My heart can safely trust in him to go and yeah. do. Um, then all of a sudden, I'm secure, and I feel better about my house, my husband, my children. I mean, yeah. everything about my yeah, life absolutely. becomes yeah. so much, like you said, so much clearer for me. But when yeah. he's unsure, I'm like, oh, Lord. This exactly. Is, <laughs> and that's know? the thing that I had to learn very quickly. I had to learn that one of the worst things – uh, for a lady is to have a hesitant man, mm-hmm. a dubious, double-minded, hesitant male. When he hesitates, when he's double-minded, when he's all over the place and he's scattered, her world becomes turned upside down. Mm-hmm. She is she, because she then becomes unsure about what she thinks and feels, 
where he's going what is he doing <laughs> <laughs> who are we gonna be today <laughs> you know <laughs> you know you spent money on what you don't you don't you the woman doesn't know how to help she doesn't know how to adapt she reads the scripture that says adapt yourself to your own husband mm -hmm. but he's a fly that won't light right you know so so she's constantly trying to figure out how do i adapt to something that won't quit moving but then what you know? else happens is now that woman says okay i tell you what mm. i'm not going to be on the titanic so we're yeah. about to figure some stuff <laughs> out true. right so Ooh, i'm gonna jump good. i'm gonna that's jump so out good. in front i'm gonna go ahead and take the steering wheel because you look like you don't know where we're going isn't and that i need to know where we're going <laughs> that happens so much and then people say well is she just so strong-minded absolutely and really what it is sometimes is the man has abdicate abdicate abdicated his place absolutely he's abdicated the clarity that comes with being the male god loves you brother i mean god for a man a man can get a hold of god absolutely because god created you first for that purpose now it's not saying you're better it's not saying you're not you're not uh you're not you're superior you're some type of tyrant over a woman uh, no 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 that's not the case the case is though god had a purpose in the order of our creation and our design and mm -hmm. you can't break it mm -hmm. but we have to learn how to yield to it Absolutely. that as a man i've learned god speaks to me he will speak to me he will lead me he will guide me and my wife wants that mm -hmm. she wants that clarity yes. she wants that guidance she wants to hear did god tell you to do it let's go baby 100 percent. let's do it mm -hmm. and we found that when when we can come into agreement in that order things always work well Absolutely. i mean without fail Absolutely. financially if it's a big deal like buying a house or making mm -hmm. a move no matter what it is if we if we follow the order it just works like a charm and can right? i just i want to encourage the ladies because i because i was that person i i understand clearly like if i don't feel like people don't have direction I'm not going to get lost with you. I just, I don't have time for being lost. Amen. I know where I want to go. Amen. Um, but you have to be very careful about that. And, mm. and agreement, like you said, is so, is so important. Um, because I, I have a mother who's a very, you know, she's a praying mother. Mm -hmm. So I would call my mom and be like, you know, mom, I'm just, and she said, star, I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God for mama. I don't want to hear it. Are y'all in agreement? And if you're not yeah. in agreement, then get off the phone with me <laughs> mm. and go talk to your husband and get in agreement. And that's, and that's, uh, to me, that is the balancing act of marriage is is that you have to be able to mm -hmm. let go. It's like yes, being on the do. roller coaster ride. You have to be able to you let put to. your hands up and go with it. You got to, um, man. And so often we feel like I'm not letting go because I don't know what you're going to do. Yeah. But, you know, one of the two things, it, it kind of segues into something else that I wasn't going to even say. But one of the things is is having godly uh, peers around you, whether Absolutely, it be your parents yeah. or whatnot. So many people go outside of their marriage and they wouldn't get that type of sound counsel. Mm -hmm. They hear something totally different and they adopt it. They bring it into their house. They plant it. It grows up and it destroys the whole home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the home is done. It's flattened mm -hmm. because there's not enough godly counsel around us. But secondly, I married my wife because she was strong. I, I don't I don't I don't kind of get this. I guess because I was raised by a single mother who was like superwoman. I mean, she she literally to me wore an S on her chest. <laughs> uh, I, I was looking for a strong woman. I didn't want somebody who would just oh just whatever. Oh, you go ahead, and I just I wanted somebody who had a perspective. Give me a perspective. Let me hear from you. So so it never bothered me, but but I didn't have. I hadn't learned what I needed to learn, though. Right. At the same time, I still had to develop and I had to grow as a man and as a husband and as a leader in my home. And so it's just a process and you have to yield to it. And I'm telling you, it bears fruit. Hear me. It bears much fruit. God is good. Is it your turn? It or is mine? my I think. turn. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my next one is that the Holy Spirit is always speaking. And I think that's, you know, mm. he's in the middle. You know, when two or, or three are gathered in his name, he's there. And the Holy Spirit is always trying to get you to that place of, of growth mm -hmm. and realization of what marriage truly is, what godly, can, what godly marriage really looks like. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I was talking about the Holy Spirit always speaking in your home. And, I, and I'll just say this. You know, there, there are times when you're not always going to understand your spouse. There are times when you're not going to know what to do, obviously. And so the Holy Spirit is there to always be that bridge and to bring you guys back together. Um, he's going to inspire your husband to hear. He's going to inspire your husband to lead. And then he's going to mm. give you the peace to follow. Yeah. And I think, it, you know, if you don't if you don't let the Holy Ghost do that for you, there's going to be a lot of tension and, a, and uncertainty in your home. Yeah, man. And and you have to recognize something. I've, I've often said this over the years, and it's something that I've I've learned and I practice in my own marriage is that 
more uh, happens destructively in silence in a home mm -hmm. than in arguments. Mm -hmm. More happens in silence than you know. Because see, when, whenever you're not communicating with each other, whenever you're not talking, whenever you're, you're just kind of sitting around uh, seething over something, burning and, and bubbling on the inside over some particularly some issue with the children or some issue with your your, your uh, finances or whatever and you're not communicating to your spouse you leave room for satan to interpret what the other person is thinking and he is always going to interpret it falsely mm -hmm. he's going to always create division because you won't take the responsibility to communicate right. clearly what you mean, what you're thinking, what's going on in your mind. Satan will come along and say, well, look, he, she's over there thinking this. Mm -hmm. You know, she's thinking this and thinking that. And mm -hmm. she thinks you're not this and you're not that. And when you leave him to interpret the silence in your home, you create an environment where he will have you guys at odds over something that you really don't have to be. You just simply have misunderstood one another because you've fail to communicate it clearly and you didn't do it and, and uh and i found that that happens a lot this is kind of jumping into to my next one which was that you know mm -hmm. we build assumptions in the, in those silence and and those assumptions shape our perceptions mm -hmm. and once our perceptions are shaped our behavior follows right yeah because the way i perceive my husband um, what I think he's thinking automatically. I'm like, I ain't fixing his plate today. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not calling him today. I have nothing to yeah. say, you know, we, but so it just, that, that elephant in the room, it grows and it grows mm -hmm. and it grows. And on, honestly, you gotta, you gotta get that, <laughs> that gun out and you just gotta shoot it and you've gotta, yeah. you gotta drag it out of your house you um, as quickly as possible. You absolutely do. Because I mean, I, you, you can see people who will sit back and they'll, they'll hold something for a very, very long time. I mean, a very, very long time. And one of the things that we used to have <laughs> used to happen, uh, I used to something would go on between the two of us and she would be feeling some kind of way about some type of discussion or conversation we had. <laughs> And I, I'd walk into the kitchen or the bedroom or wherever and see her and say, baby, OK, because, you know, you can tell once you've been married a little while, you can tell when your Absolutely. spouse is bothered. OK, they don't have to say a word. You can just tell. So you OK. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm fine. And, and we'll sit there and say we're fine. And then three days later, <laughs> when the game is on. <laughs> And you have, as a man, completely and totally forgotten everything about the argument three days ago. <laughs> she going to walk up to you and tell you how she really feel from three days ago. <laughs> now, now, as a guy, mm -hmm. as a guy, this, this happens. And as a guy, it was like, couldn't we have just unpacked all of that Wednesday? Why did we have to wait till Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, these are the things that happen. And this is why open communication is so important in the home, because over the course of time that we've learned to unpack things as they come deal with them then and we're able to close the package up say okay we've come we understand it and move on from there mm -hmm. instead of letting things linger because because as things linger i'm telling you if you sit there and you seethe over something long enough satan will come along mm -hmm. and he'll pitch something in there with it mm -hmm. there wasn't even in the conversation right. it wasn't a part of the argument it wasn't a part of the disagreement it's something new you just throw it in there and you know he also don't like the way you look or he also, you know, he'll just start to he'll start to add th things into what you're sitting there meditating on and seething over. So it's best to really come to terms at the moment and really talk those things out. I want to encourage people, though, to find the communication style that works best for mm, your marriage. Because yeah, I think, you know, people think certain things are corny. Like, it's corny if I write down how I feel and pass you that note, right? Yeah. But sometimes that's the best way that you know to articulate that's it without true. having fireworks and because we all know that an argument can start here. And the next thing you know, everybody is jacking it up. Yes. And it becomes something totally different. And the men different. always lose. That's true. Because y'all can't keep up with. We can't. <laughs> Guys, let me, let me tell you. Let me help y'all. You will never beat your wife in an argument. You will not win. You cannot. You are anatomically, physiologically, uh, psychologically, emotionally not wired to win. You will lose. It takes you too long to think about it. Brother. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get off the pot, man. <laughs> you are going to lose. <clears throat> You're not wired to win it. You will not. <laughs> because, see, here's the thing. When something gets heated in a home, 
when it gets really heated between a man and a woman and you're talking about something, it's the children, it's the finances, it's the job, it's the schedule, maybe it's intimacy or whatever. It is whatever it is. As you guys continue to wax hot, as the Bible says, I'm going to use a Bible term, That's wax nice. hot. <laughs> as, you continue, as you continue to get hotter and hotter, the woman can maintain her argument as she gets hotter. <laughs> the man, he can't. I'm telling you, he can't. He can't do it. Everything starts falling apart. That's why eventually the fella has to just walk away. Mm -hmm. He has to get out of the house. He has to go to the garage and or cut the grass. Or he just got to go do something. Get, go, go drive down and, and put gas in the car. And he already got it. He, he just, he's, gotta, he's got to get away from it because he can't maintain in that moment. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times when men kind of take flight from a, a real hot, uh, contentious time, which is going to happen sometimes in marriage, it's the process of becoming one. Okay. But when that happens, a lot of times men take flight, not because they just want to get away from you, but it's because they cannot think clearly. They can't articulate clearly the more emotionally, the more emotional, let me say they get. Mm -hmm. So, so that's one of the things you have to learn. And like, it's, like she said, you got to learn your communication style. Mm. If, if you write letters, write letters. If you got to scribble it on the mirror in lipstick. No, don't do that. <laughs> I, I love you, but don't do that. No, no, I ain't going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that. I, I don't have it to do it with. <laughs> so, but, but, I'm, but what I'm saying is, is to the men, to the women, both, as you're communicating with each other, as y'all can see, we trip. We like to have fun. <laughs> as you guys communicate with each other, find what works for you. Mm -hmm. Because the way you communicate best is what is best for your home. And can I just say this? The, the, the earmark of maturity is the person who's always trying to keep it leveled. Hmm. You know what I mean? Who yeah, always wants man. to level the conversation. Yes. And, um, and immaturity says, oh, 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 I know. I, I got something for you. Yeah. You know, and you and you get into that tip for tap. But, Reload. But, but real maturity says, I'm not trying to make this no yeah. big deal. I just, I just want to exactly. let you know where I'm at. You know? Exactly. And it's all about trying to maintain that balance. And that's another thing. That's one of the points that I've learned in marriage is that your spouse is to bring balance to you. Everything in life, it is a secret of life. Everything in life works at its best when it is balanced. Mm -hmm. Health is a balanced body. That's all it, that's basically all it is. The world is in a balance. Even every, everything, I learned this from my, my six-year-old. Okay. Uh, yeah, because he had to teach <laughs> me. He, yeah, he had to teach me that in the insect world, it's all about balance. Because see, I was running around killing the spiders, right? And my, my son is like, daddy, daddy, don't kill the spiders. They're the pest control. And I'm like, What? He said, yeah, they go around and they kill all the other bugs. So if you kill all the spiders, the other bugs are just going to take their place and they're going to be, they're going to overgrow. Mm -hmm. So he's sharing with me all this stuff because why? God created the world in balance. Mm -hmm. Everything is about balance. And in a marriage, your marriage is at its happiest when it's in balance. Mm -hmm. And your spouse, a lot of people, I see a lot of people make this mistake as singles. And this is for single people. They look for somebody like them. That, oh my God. <laughs> especially they look for sameness and especially in certain area areas, it can be very destructive. Yeah. Like if we're the same about money, we're going to be, in tr we're going to be in trouble. <laughs> problem, we're going to be in trouble because if both of us are savers, we're going to be the most boring couple you have ever seen in your life. And that boredom is going to eat our marriage. up. <laughs> mm -hmm. If we're both spenders, we're going to look like a million bucks, but we're going to be at each other's throat because we're going to be broke, always broke, 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 broke <laughs> and double broke. And yeah. so you need balance. You need somebody that brings a different perspective. Mm -hmm. It's like being on a seesaw. If you're sitting on one end, you need somebody to be on the other end to bring balance. And that's what really marriage is all about. It's about balance. Your spouse is there to balance you. Your spouse is always going to be balancing you. And sometimes we don't, we view their balance or their act of balancing us as kind of what, you know, we get defensive because right. it's like they don't, they're not accepting us for who we are. Right. But it's not that. It's that who you are all by yourself is out of balance. That's why God made Eve for Adam because Adam being all by himself was out of balance. He needed a woman. And she's the correct, she's the absolute correction to all that masculinity needed balancing with femininity.
And so it's just like Jesus. He is both a lion and lamb. This balance extends throughout all of creation. And the mm-hmm. same is true for marriage. We must make sure that we marry for balance. So don't marry somebody that's just like you who's going to sit on the same side of the seesaw <laughs> with you. That seesaw ain't going to be you no ain't fun. ain't going nowhere. <laughs> y'all both sitting on the same side. <laughs> because y'all are exactly the same about every single thing. No, no, there's got to be some balance there. And so that's one of the things that I've learned. And, and, and my wife has been an extremely great balancer for my life. And uh, and, I, and I love it. Thank you, I love babe. it. I've come, I've come to love it. I didn't love it when I first got married, <laughs> but I've come Speaking to really you. love it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, here's here's my last thing. And uh, and this is so important, guys. Uh, I can't say this enough. Give your spouse the space and the grace to grow. A lot of times. Uh, our spouses may not do everything we want them to do. They may not be all that we want them to be. And a lot of times when that happens, people get nitpicky. They become discontent. They communicate that discontent. I mean, I, I've, I've been in store sometimes and I've seen couples and you can tell when that, 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 that marriage is in trouble, boy, because that brother will be like five steps in front of her and he'll have a mean look on his face and she's snapping at him and he kind of short and ain't talking to her. And they, and there's just all kinds of issues going on because people, a lot of times we don't give each other space to grow. Amen. Give your spouse space to grow. I tell people this all the time. You will never, ever, ever hear me now. You will never meet your soul mate. Sounds sacrilegious. I know it. You, you, you've got books probably stacked up in your closet telling you about meeting your soulmate. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it will not happen. Yeah. A soulmate must happen over time. Absolutely. How can someone be your soulmate without ever knowing the breadth, the length, and the depth of your soul? Yeah. You can't get that in a meeting. You can't get that dating. You can't get that on the, on the uh, what is it, <laughs> match.com. <laughs> you, you can't get that. You can be polite to one another. <clears throat> you can respect one another. You can know you're attracted to one another. You can know that you really want to live life with this person. But being a soulmate comes as a process over time as they learn you and your soul. Right. And so we have to give people time and space and grace to grow into our perfect mate and you have a lifetime to do it you know yes, god, you god willing so yes, there's a do. lot to discover about each other and, and then also the the institution yeah. itself yeah and you got to give each other that space because a lot of times we're trying to cram what we can only experience in a lifetime into one year marriage absolutely <laughs> you know yeah. we're trying to get everything in there and we're trying to make sure we get it all and we're reading so many books and we're reading so many magazine articles and we're watching so many Hallmark movies <laughs> and we're we on BET watching this about love and this and love and that and we're, we, we, we're inundated with all of these very high sounding ideals about love when love is very, I don't mean to say this disrespectfully, but love is very basic. Mm-hmm. It's sometimes very boring. Yeah. It's sometimes it's down to earth. It's both feet on the ground. People living on earth every day, making it work, rolling up your sleeves, loving each other, uh, dealing with each other, talking about things, confronting certain things, forgiving. It's, it's all about sacrifice. It's all about the stuff that nobody likes to talk about. <laughs> everybody talks about all of this other stuff. And then everybody's divorced inside of three or five years. Everybody's mad. Everybody's waiting till they 45 before they even think about getting married. Cause I'm tired of men. I'm tired of women. I'm, you know, and everybody's disgusted because they've been reading the wrong stuff. Mm. Get back to the book. Get back to God's design because that's where real love is, man. And I'm telling you, we have found over 10 years, that's what it's all about. 